Hey everybody, Boone White with the 323 Concept Furniture Restoration. Uh, you are watching the 323 vlog. Thanks so much for tuning in. Um, today we are going to be doing a video on how to replace um, two different things. One, the seat foam. Um, and this is a specific Lazy Boy recliner. So if you have a Lazy Boy, Lazy Boy recliner and you're looking to replace the foam or add padding into the back, we are going to do a video to show you how we go about doing that. Um, so without further ado, let's jump right into the video and see how we go about doing this. All right, so to start off, we are going to need to remove the back pillow from the from the seat. Um, and I'll show you how to do that. And um, I'll also have a full in-depth video. I'll put a, a card up here in the top of the video where you can find a specific video on that by itself if that's what you're looking for. Um, but we're gonna take off the back, and then once we get that off, we're going to need to remove the uh, reclining mechanism. And basically, we're this is one that does not have a zipper access, and I come across this very frequently. Um, people don't have zipper access on the back of their recliners. Um, and I've been doing a lot of these repairs in the last month, so I thought this would be very beneficial to do a video on how to add padding if you have no zipper access. So um, we're gonna remove the mechanism, then we're gonna sort of see what we need to remove um, which staples we need to remove to be able to expose the foam in here. So let's jump into it. Okay, so here's the bracket uh, that snaps into the mechanism ear on the, on the base. Uh, as you see here, there is a rotating lever. And as you rotate it down, there's um, sort of a semicircle little knob that's going to end up blocking into the base. Um, if you need to, when you get ready to move the lever down, sometimes a flathead screwdriver will will help with that, and a rubber mallet always helps as well. But I'm going to do a real quick short video, um, sort of giving you a visual of the bracket onto the base without the back attached, because it was just too hard to film uh, the back going down onto the base with the back attached. So um, let me show you that video real quick to give you a better visual. Okay, so I found one other way to demonstrate how these work um, without the back attached. That way we can get a better visual. But this is the part that attaches to the back of your recliner. And then this is the one that obviously leads to your mechanism. Um, so basically, this would be attached to your, to your back. It just slides down into place. And you can always use a rubber mallet to tap it down if it's giving you trouble. Um, but basically, you've got this little this little lever right here and it might even make more sense to have it about midway when you slide it down it's it's not going to keep it from going down but if you have it midway you have a better better odds of getting it with your hand or your screwdriver to push it down but basically you're going to push that down and that's pushing that that circle into that that notch in there so let me take this off and give you one more visual so we're going to take that there we go. But this is that area in the frame. So when you, all right, so that little notch right here is where when you push this down, it's hard to do one handed, I'm sorry. That basically is pushing that circle into the notch so when you push it in there, that's what locks it into place and vice versa. When you pull the lever back up, you're releasing it. It's pulling it out of there. So you install it and then to lock it in, you just go, uh, I'm sorry, all the way down and that locks it in place and it's not going anywhere. And then to remove it, you just get, you can use your finger, but if it's really stiff, you might use a screwdriver like I showed you earlier and that goes all the way up and then that frees it. There you go. Okay, just wanted to do a real quick demonstration of what it looks like with the back on there. This is that lever that we looked at, and a lot of the times it'll be too stiff to use your finger. It might hurt a little bit, so I like to use that flathead. As you see, the, the vendor actually has a little notch in that lever to make it a little easier to, to get your screwdriver onto. Uh, at least I'm assuming that's why they put it on there. Uh, but anyways, uh, you can use your screwdriver go in both directions to slide that lever up or down. Obviously to get the, the recliner back off, you'll want it all the way in the, the vertical up position and that'll, that'll be what you need to get the back off. Once you get it in that position, 
Sometimes these backs can be a little stiff. You can use a rubber mallet to tap it upward. Okay, so this is our mechanism, looking at it from the bottom view. And now we just need to remove this mechanism. And these right here, you got two bolts right here, two on the other side, and then there's two on the front side as well on both sides. So there's eight bolts total. Um, depending on your mechanism, yours may be just a little different, but we're gonna remove these. Okay, so I've got to do a little interlude video here. Um, I got through disassembling everything, taking the staples out and realized my camera wasn't recording. So uh, technology at its finest, I guess. Um, but here's what happened. I took those four screws out, or four screws per side, eight screws total um, that I showed uh, right before this. And the seat popped loose, which I love. I love it when they design it like this. Lazy Boy is really good about designing things on purpose. Um, so once we got that out, um, the seat came completely loose. Love that. Um, and basically I just had to remove the staples on three of the four sides, right? So I like to do it on the back side and the two sides, not necessarily the front, unless you absolutely have to, you may have to. Um, but in my case, once I, once I release those three sides, the casing just flips over casing just flips over like that and exposes your foam so really simple so once you get once you get to that point um, you want to measure your foam this one um, is a three inch foam and it looks like it's got another one inch uh, layer that went around the top and then sort of curved over the front when you see padding like this it's starting to turn orange and you see all this flakiness um, disintegrating like that it's definitely time so once it starts turning orange and you see the flaking that's starting to disintegrate, you wanna, you wanna replace it for sure. Um, unfortunately on these, you can't really see it until you open it up and, and ex explore that. So, um, but anyways, um, one other thing I noticed when I got mine taken apart that I'll have to address. Uh, are these here? So. You've got your four sinuous springs going from front to back. Um, and then you see these little brown, these are little brown wires um, wrapped in paper. So those are called tension wires. Those hold all of your four springs together and are supposed to disperse the weight evenly. Um, well, what has happened over time, I thought this was weird. When I opened it up, I noticed this wire was hanging out over the frame right here. You can see it a little better that way. Um, and I thought, well, maybe they just forgot to trim it. Well, after looking, the whole wire, the whole wire had shifted over this direction, which is really odd. I, I usually don't see that. Um, but to say the least, we're gonna need to replace those wires. So I'll get my staple, staple remover and I'll sort of pry these clips um, out of the way. And you know what? I'll do a completely separate video on that. So if you are needing to replace the tension wire on your recliner, um, check this video out and we'll do a video on that um, while we're at it and then we'll sort of get back to this repair. Okay, so once you've measured your foam, know what size you want, you can put your old piece on top, mark it with a permanent marker, use an electric carving knife is what I use to cut through it. Um, basically, once you get that, you can throw it in your casing, stretch it around. And I also like to use that Dacron, wrap it around to give it smooth edges. Um, but basically, once you get it in there, uh, you can just dry fit it, make sure everything looks good. You may have to make a few adjustments here and there. Uh, and then you can start stretching your seat casing back around your framework. And um, that's really all there is to it. So we're gonna get this put back together and uh, go on to the next step. Alrighty, so once we get the seat put back together, we're ready to install it back to the mechanism. Um, really, it's just a matter of aligning it, um, obviously with where it was originally. So just line up the mechanism frame. There's basically some notches in the frame um, with where the bolt holes were, obviously. <laughs> so you just line those up to the wooden frame where the original holes were and uh, get your screws into the into the original holes that way everything's you know perfectly aligned as it was before so uh, once you do that that is the 
that that concludes the seat portion and we're ready to move on to the back so all right so just to recap we've got the foam and the seat replaced um, we basically took the back off we um, removed those eight bolts that were holding the mechanism to the seat once we removed those the seat popped free um, really really good design by lazy boy way to go um, once we got the seat out we just removed all the staples on three out of the four sides flipped the seat casing back exposed the foam um, I didn't show this in the video, I just sort of did a quick demo on, on how to cut your foam, but measure what foam thickness you pull out of there, um, and take into account it may have compressed just a little bit over time, um, but go to a local uh, upholstery supply store, and you can, a lot of the times, they'll even cut it out for you, so check with them. If not, as you saw in the video earlier, I used an electric uh, carving knife, and that cuts through foam really, really simply. Um, and use an electric carving knife. It works really, really well at cutting through foam. Um, once you cut through it, um, as you saw, I just sort of marked it with a, a permanent marker and then use that carving knife to cut through it. Um, and then you put it into place. I also added um, the Dacron material, which I'll put in a link in the description where you can find um, the Dacron. But usually they sell those in these big old rolls, and uh, I usually like, like to wrap that around my foam just to smooth out the edges and make give it a nice clean look. So um, once we got the foam in there, it was really just a matter of stapling it all back together, super easy. Uh, now we are moving on to the back pillow, and basically we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to uncover it. Um, it's already off, obviously, so uh, we're going to go in there with our nifty staple remover tool and we're going to remove these staples and see what's going on inside of there. Okay, so we've got the back completely removed um, to where we can really see what's going on inside of here. So if you're wondering, um, this is cotton batting, and basically that's real common, or was real common, still is usually, but um, when they would tuff the buttons down in there, they just pull it through the backside and wrap it around some cotton and tie it up. Um, that's another thing I've got to fix. I had, I think, three buttons, three buttons that came loose on here, so, um, on a side note, if you want to see how to tuft the back of the chair, uh, look up top here. I'll put a card where you can uh, find a video on that, and we'll do a video on that as well. So, um, But anyways, uh, we've got it completely exposed back here, and unfortunately, we have no zipper access. A lot of the times, you'll see vendors put zippers going across the back, usually two that separate the top from the back. Uh, I'm sorry, the top from the bottom section, and you can add padding through there. Well, this one does not have that. So um, what do we do? Basically, we are going to have to split a seam either at the top, or I guess this is the bottom right now, um, but on one of the sides or the bottom, and we're going to have to just sort of reach up in there and put padding wherever we need it, and then we'll have to sew that back shut um, by hand. So uh, we got to do what we got to do, and without further ado, let's jump into that and show you how it's done. All right, everybody, I've just about got the back pillow all put together. Before I close up my back panel, though, I need to reinstall these buttons that came loose. Luckily, in our case, the customer still had all three buttons that came off. Um, if not, you'll need to remake your buttons, and that's a different video for a different day. So um, let's get into this. What do we need? I'm gonna let that balance. Hopefully it doesn't fall on me. Um, basically, we're gonna need some tufting twine. This is a little bit thicker gauge. Um, 
and you're gonna need a tufting needle. This is about a 10, maybe even a 12 inch needle. And that ensures that we're gonna get all the way through the fabric to the back side. Um, and then to tie it off on the back side, there's a couple different methods that you can go about using. Um, one of the older school methods is they used to use cotton. You would put your tying through there, uh, put your twine through there and tie it off on the back side. That's a tongue twister. Um, in my case, one of the methods I like to use is I like to put a button on the back side, um, run my twine through there, pull it real tight, twist it, and then tie it off. So we'll use that method and you'll see a little bit more in depth how I do that. Um, but that should be all the materials we need. Um, now, as far as the twine, we want enough distance to get through um, from front to rear, um, which shouldn't take much. And then I usually, um, what you wanna do is double it up and you'll see why here in just a second. So we've got our twine. Let's go ahead and cut three of those. All right, Get that out of the way. So we want to have this doubled up. So here's our button and it's got a little eye. Let me see if I can position this just a little better so you can see it. It's got a little eye on the back side, right? So we want to thread through there with both ends of the string. Obviously, if you kept pulling, it would go all the way through. So we want to um, sort of separate this and pull our string back through that hole. And that's gonna create that bond right there, okay? Easy enough. We're gonna do that on all three. All right, so we've got our tufting needle. These are already marked, so we don't have to worry about marking them. We just go off the original location. I forgot to mention another option. If you have the ability, your, t your string on the backside, instead of tying it off on a button or cotton, if you have wooden frame really close nearby, um, you can just pull it real tight and staple it to the frame. That works as well. Um, but for something like this, there's a lot of movement on the back. You're constantly sitting back on it. So on this, it's probably a better solution to use the cotton or the button. So we've got our needle all the way through. It's poked on, it's sticking through on the backside. Um, we're just going to throw our string through the eye of the needle. And then we can pull it through on the back side. Voila. So let me flip it over. This is our string. We just pulled it through to the back side. And these are all the other ones that are already tied off the other five. So um, that's what that looks like. So let me finish off and just show you how this one's done. And then the other two would be the exact same. Okay, so we've got our button, same style. It's got an eye on the back side. Basically what we wanna do is once one string, we're gonna go through this direction. The other string, we're gonna go through the opposite direction. And then from there, you can just pull tight. And then whichever string you've got on your right hand, I just like to start with that one and start going clockwise with it. And then the other one, the opposite string, we're gonna go counterclockwise. And I usually do that about four or five rotations and then I tie it off. So we're just gonna tie a regular knot and we're gonna make sure that string goes underneath, underneath the button. Just like that and we're good to go. You can do two knots if you really want to, just to be safe. There we go.
All right, everybody, that concludes our video for today. I hope this was helpful um, for your situation. I know not every situation is the same as there's hundreds of different vendors, probably thousands of different vendors actually. Um, so there's a lot of different scenarios, but I know some of the principles from this job may apply to your job as well, and I hope it helps you out. Um, we also have other videos, feel free to check them out. Subscribe to our channel and hit that like button if you liked the video today. Um, and don't forget to hit that notification bell if you wanna receive future video updates. Um, so thanks again for tuning in. If you got any questions, feel free to comment below and we'd love to, to talk with you. And um, all of our community members usually help respond too, which is great. That's what YouTube is all about, is helping each other grow in our craft. So um, I hope this helped you out and I uh, hope to see you in the future. Thanks y'all. Thank you.